Hey Jesse and all our other listeners at True Footy, if you're bored in the house, why not play with your balls? I already do that. Our sponsors today, Manscaped, are here to make sure your balls are smooth when you or your partner are playing with them. Manscaped promotes good ball hygiene with their, in particular with their new product, the Lawn Mower 3.0. Manscaped.com is the go-to brand for below-the-belt grooming and hygiene. So when you're stuck at home in quarantine, dust gathering in the folds of your scrotum, why not make grooming your balls a part of your daily routine? That sounds like a neat idea. I'm sure Paul Hazerby would have enjoyed having the Manscaped products available to him back in 2003. Do you remember that particular incident, Jesse? No, tell me more. The West Australian caught him with a particularly embarrassing snap in his footy shorts where one of his nuts was poking out of his footy shorts. More like Paul Hazel nuts. <laughs> well, if he'd had access to the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0, that picture probably would have looked a bit better. Jesse, would it be fair to suggest that BT Brian Taylor conjects from time to time on commentary. You could say that, yes. Well, Jesse, I assure you that this isn't BT talking about Jake Stringer because Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game with their perfect package 3.0. That was a stretch, but you got there in the end. Well, with the Lawnmower 3.0, not only waterproof, it is also cordless and comes with a ceramic blade with Manscaped's patented skin-safe technology, which prevents cutting incidents from ever happening. Well, Jesse, I heard there are liquid formulations in your package 3.0. Is this true? Oh, no, it's just a bit of shadow. It's just the way I'm sitting. Oh, fair enough. Well, unlike yours, the perfect package 3.0 from Manscaped uses the best ingredients available in their liquid formulations, like the Crop Preserver which is a ball deodorant which helps your balls feeling as smooth as eggs and smelling fresh. I could so go for a ball deodorant right now. I can smell that. When you subscribe to the Perfect Package 3.0, you will get a replacement blade every three months to make sure that your trimmer stays fresh and clean. Perfect Package also comes with two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and chafe free patented Manscaped underwear. Perhaps after this bush, I could shave my balls and then I could show them to you and you could rank them one to three. If you would like the perfect package 3.0 and would like to get 20% off and free shipping, please use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all, sp all capitals, no spaces, at manscaped.com. Righty, it's time to shave those balls. Thanks, Bush. This really is the perfect package for your perfect package. Remember, guys, get 20% off these products and free shipping if you just simply use the code TRUEFOOTY20. Remember, it has changed from the previous code. Remember to add the two zero at the end of this one. Do yourselves a favor and always use the right tools for the job. Manscaped. <laughs> That was ad-libbed and I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome to True Footy Podcast 60. Bush, we are just nine away from that. Magical. That magical number. number that I know you're really looking forward to. My, what have we got planned for that? Oh, special, special oh, podcast. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to cut loose and just get on the piss and yeah. do a real cut podcast. Yeah, we do that anyway. Yeah. How are you, Bush? Yeah, pretty good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Quick turnaround potty again. We yeah. do this occasionally. Sometimes we have a long time without potties and then we do two in a week. It's been a long week for me, to be fair. I've been copped mm. in these Zoom calls all week. About yeah. 40 hours worth of them. It's weird that they do criminal cases uh, over Zoom now. <laughs> <laughs> I did actually have to do a bit of a cross-examination and oh. examination in chief. Is that a euphemism? It's whether or not I was on the receiving or giving end of those examinations. <laughs> Let's move right away uh, from this topic. Um, yeah, Bush. So we, I guess, as they would have just seen, yep. it, it from our Manscaped ad, final push on the Manscaped promo. Yep. Um, so for those who don't know, we needed to get eight uh, discount code uses for the month and we could yep. potentially get... Manscaped as a sponsor going forward. Yeah. So fingers crossed. Um, if you're watching I'm this, optimistic. you have until the end of the month, end of August. So hopefully this comes out Sunday um, yeah. in an ideal world. And then, yeah, true for yeah. 20. And uh, on a related note, Javka from the Discord wants to yeah. know, um, Busher, how's your experience been with the ball trimmer? But a couple of times I've had a chance to use it. So far, it's been pretty good. But yeah, like, really? No yeah, it looks like a clean like, shave yeah. to me. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I was a bit insecure about my work, but yeah, it's good for that valid get that validation. Javka didn't want to know how I've gone with the trimmer. He only wanted you, so yeah. I'm a bit more memey than you. I feel like I've got a bit more of that memey. <laughs> a bit vibe. more of a cult figure. Yeah, well, I just I was telling you before. I just got a message from Jersey, who's done okay. a meet and greet with some subscribers at Optus Stadium, yeah. and uh, he showed me a DM from a young subscriber. She's a female. Um, who messaged him saying, hey, can you sign my hat at the game? P.S. I hope Truefoot is not there. I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a good way to start the day. 
<laughs> really good for the old self-esteem, but uh, yeah, a bit deflating. Still. <laughs> still, she's probably a Dockers fan. She's at the Dockers game. True. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Um, yeah. So Bush, a little bit, a little bit's developed actually since the last pod. So our last pod will probably be remembered for our fiery debate yeah. about uh, the Brisbane Lions yeah, and that, um, that and the Asterix. I learnt two chestnut. things. That Learned... little hazelnut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I learnt two things from that pod. First of all, I'm never wearing a singlet in a podcast again. <laughs> Had like 10 people message me about it Being like, oh, nice singlet And then the second one was I've been spelling the word asterisk wrong for years How do you spell it? I spelled it with an X Like asterisk the goal I would have thought that myself But I, I probably wouldn't have questioned it If it auto-corrected to the K But I wouldn't have questioned yeah. the X I'm embarrassed I, I was always a straight A English student I got A in literature as well Like, great spelling Never make a grammatical error And <laughs> I, I made like three videos With the word asterisk in it So... I'm embarrassed, but okay. we'll move right along. A little bit's happened in this space because since that pod, um, it sounds like the well, that Western Australian Optus Stadium and the Eagles, um, and I presume Port Adelaide as well, will be ho- able to host home finals this year. Yeah. That That's a huge plus. That would be bloody good, player. yeah. That's yeah. for sure. Bloody extra chance for people to get around their teams, bloody mm. teams to get a chance to play home. Yeah. I mean, it's a sense of normalcy to everything in the chaos. Yeah. Yeah, so like obviously the last debate we had was under the hypothetical, the proviso that Brisbane was the only team hosting um, games. So like I said at the time, if, if any team was the only team to host games, that's where the asterisk would come into it for me. This is probably the most normal it can possibly get, um, considering Richmond and Geelong, who are the other two major contenders, can't host games at the MCG. That being said, I still think they're the two best teams in the comp still. I reckon that will be the grand That final. seems to be the consensus. Have you seen there was a bit of biffo between Lukey Hodge and BT where there's, there's yeah. sort of this topic? BT was sort of like, because a lot of people were asking what those contenders, everyone was saying like Richmond, Geelong, mm-hmm. West Coast, Brisbane. Well, Brisbane and Port Adelaide weren't in most people's list. I was saying West Coast and those two yeah. teams I mentioned before. But BT was saying, what, you don't like Port then? Like he was trying to like trap people and saying they don't right. like Port. And everyone's like, that's not what I said, BT. <laughs> I'm just thinking those other three teams I mentioned have shown better form. Yeah. Yeah, I do think the Eagles have been a little bit overrated, to be honest. Uh, I did have them in my five teams who can win the flag, largely based on um, the potential, I guess, for home finals, but also the fact that they won one two years ago and went 15-7 and seven last year. So there's a right. bit of bias towards how well they've Historical, gone in the past. Yeah. And that's why people have a bias against Port Adelaide this year because of how much they've dropped off in the past and they haven't got their finals experience. But... At the moment, like, we can touch on it as well. I was going to say, what are your thoughts on the round so far? Richmond played West Coast on Thursday night, and to be honest, it looks like there's a big golf between those teams. Yeah, Did I was surprised with the result of that, because even because I caught the first half of it, and I thought West Coast could have held on and done well, but then Richmond mm. just sort of just really ramped it up. I've probably not given them enough credit, but... True, you were not uh, big yeah. on Richmond, were you? Yeah, I've probably not given them enough credit. They're sort of... Mm. They're just so good yeah. at coming good at the right time. Yeah. And that's what Hawthorne did while they were through their dynasty. They uh, they would play well in the finals when it mattered, despite not necessarily being the best uh, team throughout the course of the year. And that's what yeah makes me a bit nervous with Richmond. But I mean Geelong last night, the other great game. They came back from six goals down. Was it in the first? Was it the first quarter or the second quarter? I'm not too sure exactly, but I remembered that glancing and seeing they were down, mm. and then f- seeing it almost flipped and thinking, what the hell? Happened it was the there? biggest comeback. For from a first quarter deficit since 1931. So we're talking about a pretty hell. significant yeah. comeback in shortened quarters. Um, and then, you know, fuck, what, what's the, what do you make of the Bulldogs? Again, that Jekyll and Hyde side can't finish yeah. off. I was praying for a Geelong loss because the Eagles obviously need to hang tight in that top four. The Bulldogs just couldn't get it done. But I, I really think this speaks to the character of this Geelong side. And again, I just think they're mm, maybe not disrespected, but certainly underrated for what they've achieved over the last two years, they've definitely been the yeah. second best team to Richmond, without yeah, a doubt. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. So, yeah. But I guess touching sort of back on the grand final, a um, little bit of chat that the grand final would be at Optus. How does that make you feel as a Perth I'd be happy for fan? it to be here. Like, I, for me, it sort of it makes sense considering we're probably in the best situation to have the most sort of opportunity for the most people to enjoy the game like mm. if everything goes to plan we're going to be at phase five october 24th when yeah and have it so we could have a full sixty thousand at the optus for a grand final we're finding out on tuesday i believe they're going to announce where the grand final is which is obviously uh, subject to change if we have a wave somewhere yeah you got to be pretty flexible with these sort of things but yeah it'd be good to have it here are you concerned but i could understand why they went another di- i could understand going another direction as yeah. well yeah 
I mean, the only the only pros for a Queensland Grand Final are that the AFL somewhat feels indebted to Queensland, which for me, um, as a fan not attached to Queensland, I don't know. I feel like that's not an ideal decision making process. I think I care most about what is the nicest stadium, uh, <laughs> which is probably again another flawed way to look at it. But I just there's think, no correct like one like there's yeah. th- that many factors that go into such a thing. There's no like narrow view that you can sort of take with it and sort of yeah and it's a strange year where the top three contenders for the the, flag. the grand final are also brisbane west coast port like yeah. each team has a has a stake so if port or west coast were rubbish this year then maybe the decision's yeah. a bit more simple i'd almost have liked to have, it's hard to leave the decision to the end of the season considering everything you've got to plan ahead and be yeah. prepared and all that stuff but it would have almost been interesting to see if they came out and said, "Yeah, we're going to leave it," and the minor premier gets the yeah, gets it sort gets of thing. the grand final. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's probably too many logistic yeah, issues there to be able to yeah leave it that late yeah. sort of thing. What's your prediction? As we record, this is like two days before For we find where out it to happen. Yeah, I reckon here. I'm thinking WA two now. Just the AFL will just see the dollar signs of having an actual good crowd there. Yeah, especially if West Coast can sort of climb a couple mm. of spots and end up in that grand final. I think it'll sell out either way. It'll sell out either way, I think. Yeah. 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 And I don't want to sound too negative. I just don't think the Eagles are going to be involved in it, the grand final. So yeah, I definitely think it's... caveated by they have to step up a couple of rungs where, from where they're at. Yeah. But as feel, an Eagle fan, there's no part of my mind that thinks, oh, it makes this... Oh, well, it certainly does make it more likely to win the flag, but um, there's no part of me that gets excited about the Optus Stadium grand final because of the Eagles because I just... Well, you think they'd lose an Optus Grand Final if they if Eagles got in against Richmond and the game was here? No. So what I'm saying is, uh, the fact that it helps the Eagles doesn't factor into the fact that I wanted an Optus. Yeah. Which might people might not believe oh, yeah. that doesn't sound very <laughs> genuine, but it's it's just because I don't think the Eagles are quite on that level this yeah. year. Uh, the, the, the next are certainly capable of making it, but I just think Richmond versus Geelong would look the best. I, I've said it a million times. This is the, the Gabba doesn't look great mm. and it's all about the spectacle so uh, yeah anyway I hope it's a, I hope it's a Perth personally I think it'll be Richmond and Geelong at this point um, but yeah Farmer Toby has an interesting question if you were the AFL CEO what rules would you change implement or remove I'd just stop playing with them I'd stop give, making changing the rules yeah I'd leave it the way it is for a few years let it build up a decent sample size so people can build up a sense of consistency not only in coaching it and playing it but also officiating it because Mm. making these changes on these umpires every year the umpiring this year has been atrocious well, but you can't fully blame them because they've been deers in the headlights just yeah. having shit changed on them every year year after year true like, this actually ties into Larry the Lobster's question as well so we can sort of yeah. group it all together transition it yep. Larry the Lobster says should we get rid of Steve Hocking as he's changed so many rules that it has made the game slower and more boring so again tying into the fact that we've changed so many rules right. has it actually made a better product I like you, some some rules you had to change like health and safety sort of stuff like some of these tackling rules and stuff yeah. like that. People, oh, you can't tackle like you used to. You can't mm. punch him in the back of the head like you used to. Like people like that. That's a bit. You got to change those rules. But some of their rules around congestion and changing interpretation of rules every year. It's excessive and ridiculous. I think. I guess my counter question to this question is: Is the game getting slower and more boring because of the rule changes, or is it simply the way the game's going strategically? And tactically, yeah, it's the coaching as much as the like. Well, the rule more changes so the are co- actually counteracting. Yeah, it's more it so the coaching for sure that's yeah. slowing it down. Like, even with the six six six, like I didn't mind the six six six, like on its merits when they brought that in. Like, mm. I still don't mind the idea because it's even center clearances. Like a team, if you get the right good center clearance, you've got one on ones in your forward line. Yeah, but the second the te- there's stoppages, it's back to normal. Mm. Which everyone suspected would happen even yeah. when they brought it in. And that's okay. I didn't really want it to go fully zonal and yeah. stuff like that. Um, well, I mean, I guess, yeah, I, What I my point is that the rule changes aren't to blame for the game getting slow and more boring, but maybe they just haven't yeah. been as effective as people had hoped. But yeah. if you look at it, the... The more the coaches are just two steps ahead. They're just that yeah. smart with their strategies and their... Mm. I, read, yeah. I remember reading something interesting. I did bring it up on the potty last year. Um, so I'll recycle this content. No, nice. but I remember, I think it was... Chris Scott, or I might have been Brad Scott, was saying um, that statistically teams were getting a lot more defensive around the rule changes, um, be, like in terms of a lot more sideways, uh, slower ball movement. And we saw, I think, the top teams last year, 
like Geelong and um, and maybe Brisbane as well, all had the slowest ball movement in terms of huh. play-ons and stuff like that. So basically, there was a trend where the ball movement across the league was a lot more conservative, yeah. and that was because of Shot uncertainty. That sort of stuff. Yeah, exactly. The uncertainty around rule changes and being conservative, I guess. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't necessarily think Steve Hocking should go because yeah. I think I think he's made small steps, and I'm I'm not a big fan of. Um, Massive changes and, and like you, It's either one or the other Like you either make Big changes and the game Gets faster Or you stop Changing it at all uh, Do you know what I mean Does that make sense Yeah, yeah for sure like yeah. You can't do nothing Forever Like like I was even saying Just simply with the safety And mm. increased information Around like CTA And that sort of shit We've gotten You've had to make adjustments To yeah. just make people safer mm. But like In terms of the like Main rules of the game You sort of can't change the interpretation it's the interpretation of them they haven't yeah. necessarily changed rules it's like well this is by far the hardest game to umpire simply yeah. because of how many decisions are subjective yeah, and exactly. like did he pass it out of bounds on the full or like throw it over bounds out of the full uh, did he have prior opportunity did he mean to get rid of it was that a realistic yeah. attempt and then also it's swayed by how, what stage of the game it is mm. like we used the example a few weeks ago with the Tabana tapping yeah. the ball out of bounds uh, and they were called it deliberate now they called it deliberate. It probably was deliberate because there was about 20 seconds to go in the game and he probably was trying to waste time. But um, had that happened in the second quarter and Tabano had grabbed it and run over the line, there's no way they would have paid that deliberate. Mm. So when you think about that, you're like, is that right? But may- maybe it is. It's one of those ones It's like you can, can complain about it, but ultimately everyone has their like argument and like justification for their interpretation. Like, mm. We both know it. You, there's... Many ways you can argue one set of facts with a different interpretation. Yeah. You can spin it however you want. And like you say, there's the interpretations there being coached to, cha- to yeah. translate it differently every week. <laughs> Just yeah. about, it seems, yeah. Overall, every time Clucko gets a coffee. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Overall, answer to this question is, uh, personally, I actually don't really care that the game's getting slow and more boring. I'm not one of those people who really is that fussed about it as a spectacle. I'm really there to see my team win. Um <sighs> What do you think? Do you do you think the game is slow and boring? Like as a product, do you? I still enjoy it. Like this, like this year, the umpiring has been particularly annoying for me. It's been mm. at the point where I've wanted to turn games off because it's been that annoying at to- in patches. But yeah, okay. Like especially in neutral games, it's just like you'll just crack the shits. with like they'll blow their whistle, like they'll blow the whistle when they shouldn't, and then they'll leave yeah. stuff they shouldn't. Yeah. Like even the GWS game, which is on as we speak. There yeah. was a stoppage early. Like, there was a centre clearance. Literally, Cornelio had Fife in, like, a full Nelson and just fell backwards, and they didn't call it. Yeah, right. And then, yet, there was, like, two seconds later, barely a high, like, because yeah. someone shrugged the shoulder or whatever, and they went... Pfft. Yeah. Sometimes I just got to swallow their whistles, but... Yeah. And then blow them when there actually is something. It's Gross. Just, yeah. yeah, true. Not, I will say, yeah. as a final point as well, I don't think Steve Hocking is to blame as such He's uh, the for the game getting yeah. slower. As I said, I think that's more of a... Committee tactical. effort by committee. It's not all yeah. Steve Hawking, I don't think. Yeah, if anything, his changes have been to try and prevent it, yeah. and it's been fairly ineffective. And I don't really care that it hasn't. Uh, that he hasn't. I, I certainly don't wish he'd been more aggressive with his rule changes. So that's yeah. where I sit on it. Um, but we'll we'll touch touch back a bit on Fireman Toby's question about rules and implementing changes to the AFL. <clears throat> Perhaps to get this conversation going a little bit. What about like? We talked about expansion in the past and, and player movement. This this part of the game interests me a lot. For me, I'd like to maybe see some sort of movement where the players don't have all the power and bargaining power at contract time. And yeah. I, we've talked about this before, but like... That's certainly something I relate to as an NBA fan, like where yeah. teams can just send guys to trades and like yeah. literally a player will find out at halftime that they've been traded to a new team mm. and they didn't yeah. even know anything about it like they can't do dick about it unless they had a no trade clause so, whereas an AFL player would be like no so I don't know if I necessarily want that I li- I do like the AFL the Australian like the AFL players having some rights I guess where my concern is is where players can just walk out after the, on their club like super easily yeah. and we're seeing it a little bit less. It seems like Brisbane and Gold Coast have got over their issues. Fremantle was, you know, it was hurting them a little bit. Um, it'd be interesting to see what happens to Adelaide. Yeah, I was going to mention Adelaide. Yeah, like, going bleed forward, a bit yeah. Of talent. They already have, to be fair, Adelaide. They have been bleeding talent the past few Good years. Good point. Yeah. yeah. No, very true. Very true. Uh, yeah, so maybe some, maybe the initial contract being three years instead of two years for draftees. 
uh. with maybe like like performance triggers so that they can earn potentially more money in their third year or whatever. Um, or it wasn't you didn't say didn't you say previously like in the NBA there's like triggers to it and then there's like an option for a third and fourth year yeah for, team and player options like where yeah. like at the end of your second year if you've got a player option you can decide to stay with that team for that third year if you've got the player option mm-hmm. but like if that player options for like not as much like if you've played really good those first two years and that player options for money that you could get way more than you can decline your player option and yeah chase the dollars if you've had really good couple like luke ryan for example if he had a player option after his past couple of years yeah he's probably outplayed the value of what he's currently on yeah yeah so he's the sort of guy that could like go yeah i'm gonna decline my player option and test free agency yeah okay fair enough interesting that's so intricate isn't it the nba yeah. sort of yeah yeah I, it'll get there eventually but um yeah uh, yeah, so for me, less player power or dominance rather, because we've seen players just walk all over teams. Um, it's in terms of like expansion and making the league fair, which has been a big theme on the True Footy podcast lately. I think it should be a slow build. I don't think we're ever going to get a thirty-four, a thirty-four game season is what we would need for a fully fair fixture. Um, and I don't think, I don't want a seventeen round season every year. But maybe I think what we could do is just start to restructure the league maybe get it to 20 teams and then like we talked about move some victorian teams out of victoria and basically what i'm getting at is more of an even travel burden because it, like i've made this point before but the if any other foreigner looks at our sport they'll be like why the fuck is it so unfair uh-huh. <laughs> there's so many teams that don't travel versus the teams yeah. that do so i guess yeah it's a tired old line but like an expansion to a point where in maybe say 30 years everyone's getting more of an even run if that makes sense I don't really care about the MCG grand final Uh. because I've made that point before the grand final should be at the best stadium and at the moment that's Optus which is why I feel Uh. passionately that it should be at Optus and um, every other year it's the MCG Hmm. yeah cool (laughs) heal all right Um, this is a question from Lockjaw Saga if I'm saying that right uh, I'm going to paraphrase the question because no. it was a little bit long-winded, but do you think the AFL would be run better if it was more of a dictatorship-style leadership? Um, are there too many competing interests at the moment the game doesn't pass the pub test? That's an interesting point. Well, it's, I'll, I'll go back to American sports for a bit of a comparison here because the mm. NFL commissioner, Roger Gattel, he's known for being a stickler, tight-ass dictator, a bit of an asshole, everyone reckons. Mm-hmm. Whereas Adam Silver, the NBA guy, is like universally revered, lets the players do all their... Like make their protest like he's very supportive of like cultural sort of stuff like social issues yeah he's really good on that front like player empowerment he's really good on that front okay because he sort of realized the players are the league whereas the nfl sort of feels more like an institution right so it's like kind of bringing that back to the afl it's kind of like that more dictative approach seems like you say more player strikes you say more of those sort of issues in the nfl when you're doing the nba mm. like even the nba they had that strike the other day but like the NBA have sat down with like Adam Silver, those sort of dudes, and they've already hashed it out and come up with a way to keep everyone happy. Whereas the NFL, they'd probably turn into a six-month shit show because they've got a dictator in charge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's yeah. all like you don't want that dictator approach because the players will just put their heels in, especially here in Australia, where we're, what we are talking about before, that more unionised sort of approach here in Australia to like player management. Yeah. Like that shit would never fly here if they tried to get dictative on the players that's true yeah and I, I think that's a good thing like it is a bit yeah. of a lefty side of me where I'm like and it's good that the players have rights but not to the extent where they can walk yeah. all over their club that's that's where I draw the line probably I'd, I'm interested to see what the, the competing interests would be like with the AFL in terms of how it affects their decision making like I can't really think of examples of that their expansion their push for expansion into places where it's probably like Maybe mm. like the footy heartland sort of places feel a lack of appreciation seeing how much effort they're trying to push in the states where the rest of Australia sort of going, yeah, these are rugby states. They're not going to give a shit about AFL. Like we don't mm. give a shit about rugby. So why would they give a shit about footy if we don't give a shit about rugby? That's probably sort of the approach people in like AFL states have when they see them pushing so hard into these sort of states. Mm. But I think the idea is like, I think it's more like asking wouldn't it be better if Gil just had free reign to just do whatever he wanted versus having to get it ticked off by different arms of the AFL? I don't know, for lack of a better word. Uh, I mean, in any, in any, I guess the the in any example, like the more dictator, dictatorial, dic, 
Dictatorial, I Dictatorial, guess. thank you. I think that is right. Uh, uh, approach will be more efficient because there's less decision yeah. making. But I don't but know. It's depends hard, who's it's making thing. those decisions. It's, hard, it's well. a hard thing to apply to the yeah. AFL. I do, th- I do like that there's checks and balances, yeah. to be honest. So, yeah, that's a tough question to answer. But the thing is with the AFL as well, because it's not exactly just like it's like 18 owners of 18 teams. It's like the West mm. Australian Football Commission backs yeah. the two WA teams. Like yeah. All the other involved arrangements around how teams are operated and... Mm. Oh, and there's that many stakeholders in the 18 different clubs like it's sort of hard to fully expedite that process in terms of decision making yeah it's not the AFL have pretty much gotten the clubs to do exactly what they wanted this yeah. year like with the all this Victorian team hubbing in Queensland like you'd have to say the AFL's had a massive win this year yeah. in terms of like, Gil's done a great job yeah in terms seen. of us still having a season with yeah. all the adversity with coronavirus um Gee, I think they've done a great job, to be honest. Yeah, I've been pretty happy with Gil, i got to say. Yeah. We'll skip down the list because there's another good question um, that's related to this topic by Big Bang Funny Woman. Oh, damn. Yeah. Um, do you think it's unlikely the AFL will introduce an expansion team in the next 10 years due to COVID? I reckon it'll definitely stall their efforts in that front. I don't know how serious they were about expansion teams in the next 10 years. They seem sort of like half sort yeah. of exploratory on the idea, but I think they'll definitely probably put the brakes on it, especially considering Corona like even AFLW because they don't want to get rid of AFLW after bringing it in and giving it every opportunity to succeed they don't want to just immediately cut that the second it sees some adversity true so they really want to probably keep the resources that they do have in the pushing what they've already got rather than trying to go out too far in the short term like maybe once we're fully over Corona and probably back to where the cap's normal and that sort of situation potentially look at mm. it but for now, I think they'll be consolidating what they've got to work, work with. 100%. It'd be interesting to see what the AFL deems as a more valuable venture, sort of maintaining the AFLW or expanding into new areas of AFL men's in terms of what they would see as more valuable. Probably AFLW, but yeah. I don't know. And like, from an optics perspective, if they... Yeah, true, try, yeah. If you let From the, an optics perspective, if they deep decrease the capacity of AFLW in any way mm. they'd be put through the ringer yeah gross <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I think I think that you nailed it there the AFLW will be a priority as well um, to answer the question so we were it's been how long nine to eight eight years since the last expansion team prior yeah. to that there was a 14 year gap between Port and Gold Coast so we were approaching the time really where it is now um, time to add clubs like it actually has been a quite a while since the last expansion between Port and Fremantle there was like two years and then you had a host of non-Victorian teams as well so but when expansion's you, actually getting yeah. slower yeah. Sorry. which is probably what you want you don't want yeah. a ridiculous amount of, you don't want a bloody team everywhere yeah oh yeah for sure for sure but um, I the guess the talent pool would be stretched to Finn as well yeah we've talked to, yeah true we've talked about um, where they should expand before and I know you're very passionate about a third WA team <laughs> The other heated debate on the uh, True Footy Podcast. But, um, yeah, short answer is I think this probably is a good 10-year setback, actually, yeah. in terms of they were probably within maybe five to 10 years. Oh, yeah. How would you say they were pre-COVID, maybe five years at least? Yeah, minimum five before they probably... Yeah, we found out about Gold Coast three years before it happened, I reckon. Yeah. I reckon that was three years early. But, um, yeah, I guess maintaining the Gold Coast for a start. But, yeah, I guess to summarise like what you said as well, there's so much uncertainty about how much money the AFL has actually lost this year. It still remains mm. to be seen. We have crowds at the moment. We've had, like, obviously, low crowds. Um, we could lose crowds at any given moment um, if there's an outbreak in any of these states. Even Queensland, they've gone right back down to nothing, haven't they, because of their recent outbreak? And uh, I'm not too sure if there's literally no one in the stands. I don't think so. Is it? I think they've cut it right back down. Yeah, okay. Well, that would make sense. They've had that recent flare-up in that juvenile detention centre or whatever. <laughs> Oh, yeah, COVID, yeah. yeah. I thought it meant you were talking about your last weekend. <laughs> um, no, but I remember Hamish did actually, Hamish McLaughlin did sort of hint the other day. He's like, I know someone very close to me who's worried we won't even get a grand final. He's obviously talking about Gil. Yeah. So, I mean, there's still a lot of anxiety, and rightfully so, that we won't even finish the season because it, it just really is hanging on a knife edge. And if that happens, yeah, that's a devastating blow for the league, and we don't even know for sure if the league will be the same next year. Yeah. Uh. Um, Massive change of pace. Who you got for the rising star, asks Bruce. Ooh. So this is an interesting one, and I think there will be a boy close to your heart. Yeah, my, my man, Caleb Strong, was probably... <laughs> probably now that Rao's obviously 
sailed in off into the sunset with his shoulder <laughs> issues. That's one way of putting it. Yeah, I think I think but we yeah, know Sarong's probably the front runner. Rao would have pissed it in. Yeah, I think. Rao would have, um, and yeah. yeah, Sarong probably would have been a worthy second a uh, uh, runner up. Um, the other contenders were probably you got Max King, Isaac Rankin, and Noah Anderson. Did Rankin actually just go out of the team? Is he injured again? He's been a bit slow the past few weeks, and I think, yeah. He either got dropped or he's injured. I'm sure he's, uh, I don't know, maybe I yeah. got that wrong. But either way, um, it's a bit harder to impress as a small forward yeah. as well, I guess. Even Whereas though he's, Sarong's getting good inside. He's yeah. been best on ground in some good yeah. inside midfield performances. Yeah, and games where he's had like 10 yeah. clearances and stuff like that. That's got to shade anything yeah. Rankin's done, even though Rankin's a freak. Yeah, um, the only two that have probably had best on grounds would be Raul and Sarong. And Sarong, Sarong probably, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so I, I think we both agree Caleb's wrong and Bruce is a Fremantle fan, so I'm sure yeah. that's exactly... That's what he was fishing for, I reckon, old Brucey. And speaking for fishing, young Dominic, big Hawthorne fan, big yeah. Sicily fan, yeah. wants to know uh, the best defenders in the league. Oh, I'd say this year, I'll, I, I'll again have to show my bias here, but I think he's earned it, Luke Ryan. Yeah, I think he's in the frame. Yeah, every, like even the other day, I was watching 360 or whatever with Waitley and Robbo, they were saying all Australian like Luke Ryan, probably yeah, okay. been the best defender this year. Yep. For some reason, they'll back and forth between him and McGovern, but I'd say I reckon Luke McGovern's Ryan's barely exactly this that's year. what I'm saying. Luke Ryan's been much better than McGovern this year. If that's who they're back and forth yeah. as the best defender in the league, like McGovern's played like four games. Exactly, like yeah. Don't know where they're going with that, but I agreed with them about Luke Ryan. But yeah, Jared Waitley and Mark Robinson do worry me sometimes. Yeah. Um, I was going to nominate Haynes. Uh, yeah, Haynes, he's good. Harris Andrews, he's going to yep. probably definitely Harris um, Andrews in the convo. Yep. Uh, Caleb Daniels having a great year back yep. into form. Braden Maynard's having an absolute breakout year. Definitely. Um, James Sisley is the one he wants us to say, and definitely. And he probably yeah. will be robbed of a All-Australian based on that ACL that he's done, uh, which is a massive blow. He's one of their best young players in general. Yeah, he was one of the few bright sides this year for yeah. one, I'd say. Like, consistent bright sides. They'll like, have a few show up now and again, but he's been consistent. The the other key back position in the All-Australian team does is, is an interesting one for me with Andrews. I think... You got Darcy Moore and Weedering off the they top. They might of my count head. Luke Ryan as a key because he's been playing key mostly this year. Luke Ryan. Yeah. Okay. A lot of like when you hear all the pundits talking about him, they call him a key. Yeah, they did call Jeremy McGovern a halfback flanker the other day. No, it was Eddie McGaw. I said that. I was like, <laughs> how much do you watch? Um, we also I want sh- should actually acknowledge some of these other players. A couple of players. You, oh, Tom Jonas. I'm going to say is up there as well for the key back position. But some of these players as well are having real breakout years. Uh, Sam Collins, he's been... Your old he's one I never wanted to let go of. Yeah, yeah, emotionally and romantically. Absolutely. Um, who else have we got? Ridley. He's having a really good breakout year yeah. for Essendon as well, Jordan Ridley. He um, killed me in a fantasy one week before. Oh, gross. Well, week before, oh, I've, AFL compl- fantasy. Yeah, before I've completely given up on AFL fantasy and tipping. Yeah. I was doing good in tipping, but I've given up on both completely now. But yeah. back into it, I guess. We kind of frame that as what are the all Australian backs because I don't yeah. think we named all the best defenders in the league. You have to say Gov's up there with the best yeah. defenders in the league. Shannon Hearn uh, is having a down year, but he's been so good. Hasn't Shep been better than him this yeah, year? Yeah, easily. Brad Shep is up there as yeah. well in this conversation. Bashar Hooley, yep. Dylan Grimes, uh, all these guys are still around that mark. But um, but yeah, I hope I hope um, Dominic yeah. heard what he wanted to hear. Yep. <laughs> some nice things about Sicily. We did say some nice things about Sicily. Yeah. Perf wants to know what are our thoughts on Matthew Nix at Adelaide. They currently sit well, zero and thirteen. What have you What have you made of Matthew? It's Nix? hard to say considering where their list is at and where everyone's heads are at. That's like considering everything. It's real hard to say. Like, but you could worry that there's a bit of Brendan Bolton about him potentially. Like, if he doesn't sort of get them to show a win or something. Do you have a shotgun nearby? Mate, I'm <laughs> fucking thinking about it. <laughs> There's a man-sized dog pouring at the door to get in. Yeah. It's not cute. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just it's probably kidding. adorable, but it's giving me the shits at the moment. <laughs> if anyone watched the Outback Hoops NBA Happy Hour, I said it completely wrong there, but there was a bit where I cropped it out where you just sort of see me turn because I was yelling at yeah. that shithead. Yeah, I did notice yeah. that as well. That made me laugh. Yeah. My, my cat, when I, go, when I used to live with my dad and we had a yeah. cat, It'd fucking know every time I was about to do a video. I would start yeah. the camera and would just start meowing its fucking face <laughs> off. It pissed me off so much. I love animals. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree with what you said about uh, Nick. So Owen thirteen in a year where they've had to hub as well. I mean, maybe it's not a fair excuse because everyone else has hubbed yeah. at some point. But I just think with a young, unsettled team, 
a little bit of adversity there. But like you said, the issues at Adelaide are so deep-rooted that you can't possibly know where that ends and Matthew Nick's performance starts uh. because, A, they've got a shocking list. They've bled so much talent. The culture is shit house. Like, I think is the coaching, the assistants he got around him pretty young as well. I could be wrong. I think so. And let me know in the comments, but I think he's got a pretty young, inexperienced coaching um, group. Maybe Camparelli is still there. I'm not too sure. Uh. Talking out of my ass at this point. But my point stands. Uh, it is so hard to assess what's happening at Adelaide. I can't even really make sense of what game style they're trying to play because they're so bad mishap. at executing yeah. it. <laughs> so mishap. Yeah, and it's like we said, it could get worse before it gets better. I hope he's not like the collateral damage was part of that because he might do a bloody... Who's an example of this? Brendan Bolton, uh, maybe even a Mark Neald. Might maybe hard to say that Mark Neald wasn't a bad coach, but basically taking over a, co- a team so bad that you yeah. can't possibly show what you have. That's kind of why I went, why I brought up Bolton. I sort of felt like he, Nick's has that potential. It's like he might yeah. not necessarily be a bad coach. He might not. He might just not have the roster to show it, mm-hmm. or he might be too inclined to try and play youth rather than. Yeah, um, yeah. What Adelaide need is. They're probably going to go 0 and 18, and if they do, I think Nick shouldn't get the sack. I think that's you can't do that in his first year. Nah, give him a second year, and they're going to have to get this draft right. They're going to have to do a port. I hate to say it, they're rivals, yeah. and get three great first rounders or whatever they're going to do. Um, yep. I don't know what their pick situation is like this year. Obviously, pick one, but whether they can turn that into two top ten picks, or something like that. Yeah, I, I'd urge them to be creative with it, but they need the talent. Um. All right, a couple of questions to finish off. This is going to be a short pod, I actually reckon. Um, That'll be good. You might have it out, buddy, real early Sunday at this right? Yeah, hopefully. So Dominic wants to know when we're doing the goal kicking vid because we didn't answer that last week. I'm up for that, but I got to admit, I was also having a half idea for the Hoops channel where I was going to do oh. a challenge you, True Footy, Cool Worldy, People and Drews. You do a bit of a challenge thing with all of us. Oh, okay, like uh, you basketball. Could, well, you'd more host it, but yeah, you can sub in for the Drews, Cool Tard team. That's oh, like yeah, true okay. footy, cool. Oh, yeah, you? okay, no, I'll, yeah. um, I'll Bit of play, content for everyone, bit of That's spruce good. everyone up. Yeah, that'd be good. Sort of a half-backed idea. We're thinking of goal-kicking comp as well. And, yeah, yeah. incorporate the goal-kicking into it because we'd go somewhere where there's an hoop. And a, Dylan would absolutely yeah. smoke us. So Dylan used to play reserves for East Fremantle. Yeah. Those who don't know him, he's been on True Footy Live a bunch of times, yeah. my roommate. Um, yeah, talented footballer. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think he would put us to shame, but... He'd put us to the fucking sword, let's be honest. I think, yeah. <laughs> I think it's uh, I think it's worth doing, though. Yeah. yeah. It's good content, bro. Good it is content. good content. When the weather's consistently good. Yeah. I don't own a footy. Do you own a footy? No. Oh, well, then we're not doing a fucking video. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Dylan owns a footy. Bloody hell. Yeah, right. Oh, Drillsy. Bring your footy up, I Drillsy. think he does own a footy, actually, because he's yeah. done with this video before. Yeah. But, yeah, anyway. All right, spicy question for you, Bruce. Uh, right from me. Bruce, rather. Yeah. What's your pet peeve about the other person? I, I was reading this question. I oh, had, you had that prepared. You went straight well, into it. Well, because I actually thought about, like, I had to think about it. And, like, it's one I only noticed it because it's I do it as well. It's mm-hmm. like I do the same things. Like, if we're having a conversation, you'll assume you're right until they give you a good reason that you're wrong. I'm the same. Like, mm. I'll always assume I'm stubbornly right until someone gives me a good argument, and then I'll consider it. <laughs> but I'll go into it assuming I'm right. You probably do the same thing sometimes. But I'm probably worse for it, I reckon. I don't think I'm too bad for it. I do think we both really dug in yeah. on the... Um... Not that... I didn't even mean on that specific... I meant oh, okay. generally, yeah. I just meant yeah. more generally. But yeah, I'm probably okay. worse for it. But the only reason I noticed it in you is because I noticed it in me. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, probably your body odor. <laughs> 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 oh, like, no, nah, I'm just kidding. Like, breath, armpits, what are we talking here? Yeah. Nuts. Nah. Certainly not nuts with the new sponsor. <laughs> the ball deodorant. There you go. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I, I don't really say I have too many pet peeves. Um, yeah. You do get very passionate in the dis- in the debate. Yeah. My passion can get me into trouble sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that was unexpected. The only other time I've seen you fire off about that was when we were trying to tell you that you went a Severus Snape <laughs> to your 21st, which you fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> I still need to see pictures. Cause I, the costume <laughs> might have looked like that, but I... No, it wasn't that. I have to see pictures. It was. But anyway, uh, we'll move on <laughs> before we get another repeat. No, nah, I'm just kidding. No, nah, mate, we clip this up and we could content. Yeah. Cool, man. Severus uh, Snape, Dumbledore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think that's just about it for the potty. Um, no more questions? No, I actually ran out. Oh, oh, I'll just check the Discord because I actually haven't checked it for like 12 hours. Uh, 
Because um, I was hot, I was straight on there. And I, f- I thought that was more for some reason. Uh, nah, nah, I think that's it. Oh, okay. So, y- Jarkin asks, um, if you were married to each other, how long until the divorce <laughs> happened? Well, <laughs> I guess we could do that again. <laughs> um, yeah, a few people d- make the same mistake twice. <laughs> 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 nah, um... Yeah, it probably wouldn't take long, yeah. to be honest. You do have a wandering eye. I wouldn't trust you around <laughs> women. So, yeah. Yeah, mate. Uh, cool. All right. Well, that probably sums up True Footy Podcast 60. We'll be back right. again to do this sometime soon as the season heats up. Um, Countdown to Podcast 69 is on. Yeah, that's it. And then we're going to quit. Um, no, nah, get around. Quit out, at the top. Out, NBA Outback Hoops Experience. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Is it NBA? No, because it's just outdoor. No, why do I keep saying outdoor? <laughs> I keep saying outdoor. I, know, I said it in the last yeah, one, yeah. you didn't correct me the first time. Yeah, it went way over my head. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Yeah. All right, Outback Hoops experience. Yeah, that's the channel, and then, but the podcast called the NBA Hoops Happy Hour. Okay, yeah, sweet. All yeah. right, get around that. Get around Cold World. We're going to be shooting yep. potty tomorrow. Um, just get around us generally. Nice. Cool. All, right. all the content production. Yeah, that's it. Content machines. Fucking oath. All right, see you, everyone. Catches.